शोरे महीनो सुनकर तुझे तक मैं दवाया शोरे महीनो सुनकर तुझे तक मैं दवाया Today we will understand the summary of Al-Juz Al-Thamin, the 8th Juz of the Holy Qur'an. To start off, we will continue the analysis of Surah Al-An'am, and then we will move on to the next chapter. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaytan Ar-Rajim, Bismillahir Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah's name I begin with, the most gracious, the most merciful. وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَكَلَّمَهُمُ الْمَوْتَى وَحَشَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ قُبُلًا مَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ يَجْهَلُونَ It was mentioned in the previous lecture that the disbelievers, they demanded and requested Sayyidina Rasulullah وسلم, for many things. And they said that if their demands and the things that they requested for were fulfilled, only then will they accept the truth and accept Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse explains that even if the angels were to be descended unto them, and even if these disbelievers were given the ability to talk to the dead, and even if everything was resurrected and put in front of them, they still would reject and they still wouldn't accept Islam. Then in verse 112 of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives His beloved Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam relief and comfort by telling him that the evil people and the evil jinnat were sent down to the nations of every Nabi, to every Prophet to misguide the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that if He wanted, then these shayateen these evil beings will never be able to harm and misguide the people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trials whoever He wants to see if they will stay patient against the evil influence of the shaitan. Then in verse 117 and 118, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands and He permits the people to eat that meat which was slaughtered by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that animal which was slaughtered and the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was mentioned upon it, then the meat of that animal is permitted and allowed for you. The muharramat, those things which are not allowed for us to eat, have already been mentioned, and therefore we should stay away from those things. The believers should stay away from those things and not eat them except for when they are forced in a situation to eat them and to stay alive. Then in verse 124, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَإِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَاتٌ قَالُوا لَن نُؤْمِنَ حَتَّى نُؤْتَى مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ رُسُلُ اللَّهِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ حَيْثُ يَجْعَلُوا رِسَالَتَهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He explains that when the disbelievers see the clear sign of truth, they claim that we won't accept and we won't believe it until we are given those same signs that the messengers were given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that He knows who to give the messengerhood to and who deserves it. These disbelievers, the kuffar, they are not suitable to receive the messengerhood as they are involved in evil, jealousy, and corruption. Therefore, because of their sins and their corruption, they are not worthy of receiving these ayat, these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that whoever He wishes to guide he opens their heart for the acceptance of Islam and He makes it easy for them to accept the truth. And whoever He decides to be destined for misguidance, He ties their hearts from accepting the truth in such a way that when they are invited towards the haqq, when they are invited towards the true deen, it is difficult for them to accept it and they feel a burden in submitting to the truth. Then in verse 130, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He questions the human and jinn creation. 
يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِنْكُمْ يَقُصُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He questions the people in the jannat that did the messengers not come to you who would recite my ayat to you and warn you of the day of judgment? The kuffar, they will then testify against themselves after their body parts began exposing their kufr. Meaning at first, they will try to lie and say that they did not reject and they did not disbelieve. But once their body parts began to expose their kufr, then they will testify against themselves. Then in verses 138 and 140, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that the disbelievers and the mushrikun used to designate some of their animals to serve their idols. They would prohibit people from eating them and they would prohibit people from climbing onto their backs even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't prohibit these things. And some of the animals would be slaughtered with the names of their idols and the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be mentioned. They will do these evil acts and on top of that, they will connect them to the hukm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking that they are commanded by Him. Meaning, they will do these things and they will have the wrong thought in their heads and they will do nisbat of these actions to the hukm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the people, He states, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the people to eat from these bounties and to give zakat for the farming land that grows crops and fruits through the rainwater, meaning they are grown by themselves. The people, the owner of that land doesn't have to water the crops himself and work on growing the fruits and crops himself. The ruling regarding the zakat on this land is that he will give one-tenth, meaning he will give 10% of that land as a zakat. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how those animals with nails and the mufassirun, they explain this and say that this refers to the camels, ostriches, and ducks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that these animals and the fat of the cows and goats were made haram and unlawful for the Jewish people because of their sins. In exchange of their disbelief and their corrupt actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited these things for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions how He gives the disbelievers, He gives the kuffar a second chance and He doesn't rush to punish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He is not in a rush to, to give His azab to these disbelievers. Rather, He gives them another chance. He gives them another opportunity to repent and to accept the truth. In verse 148, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, سَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا أَشْرَكْنَا وَلَا آبَاؤُنَا وَلَا حَرَّمْنَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that the disbelievers will now say that whatever they do is from the mashiyat and from the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that they are now going to blame taqdeer they are going to blame the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever they do. They say that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want to, and if He didn't decide to, then we wouldn't do all of these things. We wouldn't do the sins and the evil things that we have done. Therefore, this is proof that He is pleased with us. The kuffar, they say that everything that we have done is from the mashiyah, from the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. However, in reality, this excuse is invalid. And the truth is that his mashiyat, his decision doesn't correlate with his pleasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those things that the anbiya alayhim salam preach and command for. Meaning if you obey, if you follow the prophets, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will be pleased with you. Then in verses 151 through 160, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that believers should never create partners with Allah. They should give parents their rights and they should act and behave 
in a good manner with them. They shouldn't kill children out of the fear of not being able to handle them and raise them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to restrain from the hidden and open sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commands that you don't kill anyone without having the right to do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits from taking the wealth of the orphans unlawfully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to be accurate in transactions, meaning when you do any transaction or any trade, to make sure that everything is accurate in the trade. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to rule with justice for everyone and to never be unfair. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to fulfill the covenant and oath that was made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing these things is mandatory. Therefore, stop dividing and creating separation between each other and follow these ahkam, follow these rulings that are mentioned as well as whatever ahkam are established in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in verse 162, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands His beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to say that my salah, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of all worlds. This is the true purpose of our creation and this is the meaning of true iman that everything that you do, all of your sacrifices that you make, all good deeds and even your entire life should be spent in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in the last verse of this chapter, it is mentioned that the differences in people and the differences in their status are only a test to see who will obey Allah even after struggling financially and who will be so lost in their wealth that they will reject the ahkam, they will reject the orders and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty mentions that it doesn't take long for him to punish and indeed he is the most forgiving and most merciful meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he wants he can punish you for your disbelief and for your sins and if you make true tawbah if you repent to him then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving he is the most merciful and if you are true in your repentance then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely forgive you the next chapter in the holy quran is Surah Al-A'raf, which was revealed in Makkah Al-Mukarramah. And this surah consists of 206 verses. A'raf means high in altitude, and it also means to know and recognize. The Ashab Al-A'raf refers to those people whose good deeds and bad deeds will be measured as equal, meaning they will have equal amount of good deeds and bad deeds, they will be given a position between Jannah and Jahannam. Or Ashabul Araf refers to those who recognize the people of paradise and hell. There are different views regarding who the Ashabul Araf refers to. In verse 4 of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that some villages were punished while the people were sleeping in the afternoon. Then after the azab, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sent to them, they admitted and they confessed that yes, we are oppressors. But this confession and them admitting that they are oppressors didn't count as repentance because they admitted to this after they witnessed the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in the 8th verse of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْحَقِّ فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that the measuring of the deeds on the day of judgment is haqq. This is absolutely true. And those who have more good deeds than bad deeds are the successful ones. And those who have fewer good deeds, they are in loss. Then in verses 11 through 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam and the accursed shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He commanded all the angels and Iblis to do sajda to Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. When Iblis rejected and didn't prostrate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him why he didn't obey the command of Allah. Shaitan, Iblis, he responded and said that I am greater than Adam and therefore I won't bow down to him. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then left Iblis and took away the izzat, the rank and status that he was given. Now he will be accursed. Iblis then stated that he will find a way to misguide the children of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam from all directions. Meaning he will come from the left, he will come from the right, he will come from in front of them and he will misguide and divert the children of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. Allah Almighty tells Iblis that your followers, those who fall into your trap and follow you, they will enter the fire of hell. Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam and his blessed wife Sayyidina Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha, they were commanded to stay in Jannah, but they were forbidden to eat from a specific tree. The shaitan, he told them that if they ate from this tree, they will become angels and they will be able to live forever. That is why they are being forbidden to eat from it. He tricked them and convinced them to eat from that tree. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, Did I not forbid you to eat from this tree? And did I not tell you that the shaitan is your open enemy? Then they both repented and they made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ They asked that, O oh, our Lord, we have oppressed ourselves. And if you do not forgive us and do not have your mercy upon us, then we will truly be from the losers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sent Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam and Sayyida Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha onto earth. And he told them that you will stay here for a certain time. Then in verse 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ya Bani Adama qad anzalna alaykum libasan yuwari sawatikum warisha wa libasu taqwa dhalika khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the purpose of clothing. He states that he gave Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam clothing to wear in order to cover himself, to hide his private parts. And another reason, another purpose for clothing is to enhance the looks and to beautify yourself. This proves that clothings can be worn to better your looks and to enhance your beauty. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that the libas of taqwa, the libas of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and striving to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the best libas for you. This is better than the clothing that you wear to beautify yourself. In verses 31 and 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam to put on nice clothing when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah commands him to not waste the ni'mah, the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. Rather, take advantage and benefit from them. He explains that he has made zahiri and batini shamelessness, meaning apparent and hidden shamelessness, and he has made turning away from the truth as haram, meaning having shamelessness, this is haram, and turning away from the truth, turning away from the haq, this is also forbidden. In verse 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that the doors of the skies will not open for those who belie and reject the signs of Allah, and for those who are arrogant, and nor will they enter Jannah. In verse 43, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that He removed hatred from the hearts of the people of Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding these people who will enter Jannah, Allah says that they thank Allah for guiding them. Meaning they are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guidance and showing and guiding them upon the path of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions the signs of his qudrat, of his power, and he tells the people to call out to Allah while fearing his punishment and trusting in his mercy. In verse 57, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the system of the mercy of the rahmah and how the winds cause the clouds to move and through this system, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives rain. Then because of the rain, the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grow in the ground. In verse 58, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُهُ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ 
وَالَّذِي خَبُثَ لَا يَخْرُجُ إِلَّا نَكِدَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the good land, the good ground gives greens and the provisions in the fruits and the vegetables grow from that ground, from the hukm, from the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ground that is not good, then nothing grows from that. Through these examples, the Holy Quran explains that the hearts and the minds of the people are like the land, meaning that the pure hearts accept the truth, just how the good land was able to produce the fruits and vegetables. The heart that is pure accepts the truth through which the fruits of good deeds come out. And the impure and corrupt hearts, they don't grow anything and can't bring out the good fruits of pious deeds. Then in verse 59, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the leaders from the qawm of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam said that you are in clear misguidance, ma'azallah. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam explained to them and told them that I am the messenger of Allah and my duty is to better your lives and to invite you all to the truth. Then in verse 65, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the nation of Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam who were known as the Aad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they also mocked the Nabi of Allah and Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam also responded to them with the same thing that Sayyidina Nu alayhi salam told his nation and he told them that I am a Nabi sent to you from Allah. In verse 73, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam and his nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam a miracle upon the request of his nation. The miracle was that a camel was given birth from a rock. Then this camel drank as much water as the entire tribe of the Samud of the nation of Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam would drink. Also, this camel would give so much milk which would be enough for the tribe, for the nation of Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam and they wouldn't need any more water. Then in verse 80, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam and his nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the nation of Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam did something that wasn't introduced into the world before and they went against nature to go towards the men and commit evil acts. They desired men instead of women and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِّن دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these people, they desired men instead of women, which is against nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that you all crossed the limits. Meaning that because they left what was halal and went towards what was haram, they became a nation that crossed the limits and transgressed. Then in verse 85, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Sayyiduna Shu'ayb alayhi salam and his qawm who were known as Madian. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِصْلَاحِهَا Meaning, do not cause any corruption on the land after its islah, after it has been organized and fixed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them not to sit in the way, not to sit in the way of the believers to try and scare them and frighten them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them and told them not to stop them from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised them to learn from those nations who came before and how they did such things that caused their destruction. This concludes the summary of al juz al-Thamin, the 8th juz of the Holy Quran. Inshallah, tomorrow we will continue with Surah Al-A'raf and complete the summary of the 9th juz in the Holy Quran.